good afternoon and aloha. Uh, welcome back to Condo Insider uh, on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Jane Sugimura. And today we'll be discussing open board meetings. Uh, this is a very important topic. And you know we've had certain we've had you know several shows on uh, this particular topic, but we still get questions and concerns from condo owners. They keep coming in, and so you know I think it's worth it to talk about it again. And uh, you know the first issue is why are board meetings in, why are open board meetings important? And I think the most common sense answer to that is because owners are allowed to attend. And owners are allowed to participate. And, and sometimes this is their only connection with, you know, working with the board, unless they see them in the, in the building or down at the swimming pool or at the barbecue, you know, to talk about, you know, the building. And so, you know, it's really important to uh, include the owners in these discussions to allow them to participate. And yeah, they may disagree with you. I mean, because not everybody is, you know, is in agreement with the board. And heck, if you're gonna disagree, you might as well disagree in public with you know everybody there to you know chime in. And uh, so that's why these open board meetings are really, really important uh, because it, it does allow the owners to participate and they should participate. They are members of the association. They pay maintenance fees. So they're paying you know, uh, for the upkeep and maintenance and they're paying, they're contributing to the salary of the employees on the on the premises and so yeah they should they're entitled to you know have their two cents and that's why these uh, these uh, board meetings you know um you know should be open and the uh, the statute 514b chapter 514b which is a statute that regulates condominiums the intent of the statute and and the section particular section I'm talking about is 514b 125 and that's the one about board meetings. And, um, and, and the intent behind that statute is to allow, is to make clear that owners are allowed to attend the board meetings and they're not supposed to just come and sit there and listen. I mean, that's not much fun. And not, you know, if I was a, a, an owner, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd you know, wanna attend a board meeting where I just sat there and listened and I wasn't allowed to make, you know, put in my two cents. So anyway, the statute is intended to allow owners to participate. And, uh, and, 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 and that's what I wanna make really, really clear. Up until three years ago, the statute had language in it that said that the board could limit board participation, I mean, owner participation. And, what it, and the words in it basically said that upon uh, a vote of the board members, they could vote to exclude owners from participating. That language was removed from the statute over three years ago. And so there are a lot of people who sit on boards, old timers, who don't know that the law has been changed. And so they may, you know, they may think that it's, in, that it's the law, but it's no longer the law. It used to be, but not anymore. Okay, as of three years ago, a, the state of Hawaii took that language out to make it clear that owners have a right to participate in, 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 in the words of the statute, in the deliberations and the discussion of the board. And that's not limited to the owner's forum. Because some people say, oh yeah, well, we have an owner's forum. And yeah, we let our owners speak during the owner's forum. No, 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 no. The statute says that the owners can participate in the deliberations and discussions of the board. That means that you have a board agenda, and let's say you're talking about uh, plumbing repairs, okay? And there's a and and while the board is discussing this, you have an owner who raises their hand. The chair should recognize that person, and that person may have a comment, or a question, or an observation. And you know these are all very important to the board in making its decision. And it may not be what the board wants to hear, but they are owners. They live in the building. And you know they may see things uh, that you know the board members don't see or don't know about, and so it's very important you know to to allow this uh, the, the uh, owners to participate. Even though the owners can participate, 
that doesn't mean that they can take over the meeting, you know, hijack the meeting. In other words, you get, let's say you get a, a, a bunch of uh, uh, people who are unhappy with the board and they decide they're gonna take, take over the meeting and they're gonna ask all kinds of questions and they're, and they're gonna be, uh, you know, being disrespectful uh, and saying, oh, the board president is doing this and that and he shouldn't be doing this and that. No, that kind of stuff is not gonna be permitted because the statute also says that you know, even though owners can participate in the deliberations and discussion of the board, the, the, the board can adopt reasonable rules of owner participation because the main thing about a board meeting is the board has got an agenda. And those of you owners who have ever attended a board meeting know that the agenda is posted. It's posted somewhere in your building that says that there's gonna be an, uh, a meeting on such and such a date at such and such a time. And there's an agenda. The main purpose of the meeting is to get through that agenda, okay? But the board can adopt rules, reasonable rules is what the statute says. And typical of the rules are uh, owners who, who come can, you know, each one can speak for maybe, there's a time limit, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes or whatever time they decide on. And if you've spoken once, you don't speak a second time until everybody else who wants to speak on that subject has had an opportunity to speak. And that's fair, right? You know, and, and so after everybody has spoken, and if you want to come up and say something else, then you can raise your hand. But, you know, you got to understand that, there, that there's a time, the, the, the board has got to get through their agenda. So you don't want to be repeating stuff that somebody else has already said. But if you have something new to contribute, then of course, you know, if the, if, if the chair, and usually it's the president, uh, wants to allow you to speak, and, it's the, and the chair is as, as part of, you know, running the meeting, decides whether or not you're going to speak a second time. And, and the, 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 the reason why you may not be allowed to speak a second time is because the president has got to get through uh, the agenda. And, and they can't let the uh, owner's participation and uh, input take away from the fact that you got to finish the agenda, okay? And to the extent that you're allowed to participate, it would be uh, limited by these rules. And uh, the rules, once they're adopted, I mean, they have to be adopted by the board. They, and, and in my building, they're going to be posted along with the notice of hearing uh, of, of the meeting. Every time those rules change, they got to be circulated to the owner so that the owners know what the rules are. I mean, that's fair, right? If you come to the meeting and you're allowed to participate, you should know what the rules are. Oh, and one of the, one of the, the standard provisions of these reasonable rules is that people got to be just, people got to be respectful. In other words, this is not the time to be calling people names, uh, making allegations that somebody is a cheater, somebody is a fraud. Those kinds of comments will not be tolerated and you can be censured. In other words, or you can be, you know, and you know, told you can't participate. You may even be asked to leave the room. Okay. And that's fair too, because you can't have, you can't come in and disrupt the meeting. The board has got important business to, uh, to do. And so, you know, that's the primary purpose of the meeting. And, uh, but as part of the meeting, the owners are a very important part of the meeting. Their input is important, and uh, and that's why you know the, the the rule was changed three years ago to make sure to clarify that owners did have a right to participate in every part of the meeting. Okay, and you know the the owner participation is important because it allows owners to ask questions, to provide feedback. Because like I said before, you I I. I don't know how many members uh, you have on your board, but you know it's typically nine people or seven or five. But those people, you know, maybe have jobs and they're not there, you know, twenty four seven. And so maybe they don't see everything. And so that's why it's important if you're the owner and you're sitting in the audience and you're and and you come to these meetings that if you see something or you hear something that maybe it's not 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 what you've seen, or if you have a question. You should raise your hand because it's going to it's going to affect how you know board members uh, decide on whatever issue is on their agenda. 
And um, the, the, another reason for having open meetings is to allow free communication between owners and the board. And I can't emphasize this enough. Sue Savio, who runs Insurance Associates and her company you know, uh, insures a whole lot of condominiums. She tells me that Hawaii's got more lawsuits and claims made against the board by their owners. This is because there seems to be some miscommunication between the owners and the board. They can't seem to get along and the owners file claims, which they're entitled to do. And it could have been because of a miscommunication, a misunderstanding, because people don't talk. That's what happens when people don't talk. And anyway, this is not good for the association because every time that happens, then it affects your insurance. Officers and directors, the association has an officers and directors policy. And every time a claim is made, guess what? If, you, if your association has a whole bunch of claims, the premium goes up. And I don't know how many, and, and even though it's not an expensive coverage, because I think typically a couple of years ago, before all these, you know, before it got really bad, uh, DNO officers and directors uh, uh, insurance coverage was about two or three thousand uh, dollars a year. Uh, and if if anybody, if any of you want to go and look at your finances, you'll find that the DNO is probably up to five and six thousand dollars now, mainly because of these claims. And and my association, we haven't had any claims, but our Premium goes up, and you know, to me, I get really mad. Why, why, why are my premiums going up? That's because you have condos in the state. We're in the same risk pool. So if I'm in the same risk pool as a hundred other condominiums, and fifty of them have owners and board members who are fighting with each other, guess what? My insurance premium goes up, even though my 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 building has no claims at all. And so that's why, you know, I am, I am asking and, you know, I, I sometimes, you know, get on my, you know, preaching bench and, you know, and tell people you got to get along because, you know, this, if you don't get along, I mean, you think it, it's, it, it, there are no consequences, but it is your insurance premiums go up. If, if you look at your finances and you look at your DNO and your umbrella coverage for the last five years, it's been going up because there are claims and lawsuits. And, you know, so in, in, if there's a way that we can minimize these lawsuits and claims, uh, we should do so. That's why the open board meeting is so important. And yes, you're going to have disagreements. You can't live in a building with 300 other families and not have a disagreement on how the building is run. But that's okay. It's okay to disagree. Okay, the, 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 the point is that you got to talk and be transparent. And so that you know where, you know, where there's a, a concern and you should address it. The concern doesn't go away because you, you, you don't address it or ignore it. It festers, it gets bigger. And next thing you know, there's a claim file and your insurance is going to go up. And that means that, you know, that means that for everybody in the building, the insurance, I mean, because they pay maintenance fees and your maintenance, your insurance is included in your common expenses. So if the insurance goes up, that means your maintenance fees go up. Okay, so that's another reason why, you know, we, we all got to try to communicate. And one of the reasons and one of the biggest opportunities is that a board meeting. And so, yes, and, and if you're going to be doing a, a project and maybe there's going to be a special assessment, you want the owners to know. You don't want them to find out by a rumor. Uh, and then, then, then they're going to be all mad and say, well, geez, how come you didn't tell me? And how come you guys didn't do something about it before making a special assessment? Because there's nothing that gets owners madder at their board. And if you do a special assessment, they're going to say, how come you didn't plan? How come you didn't do this? How come you didn't do that? And that's why you need to have these open board meetings so that, you know, if there's a concern that the owners know about it, that they're involved in the decision-making process and they know that you've taken steps to try to uh, repair it or to try to undo these bad effects, 
you know, so that you won't have to go out and spend money on, on huge re repairs. And, you know, so they know the story behind the special assessment before they hear that, oh, did you hear the board is going to do a special assessment? And then everybody gets mad. Okay. So that's why, you know, and you want to make sure that these issues that might become contentious are discussed at the board meeting so that the owners can hear it. And yeah, it, it's not good news. It's not good news to say, oh, well, uh, you know, we've been having all these plumbing problems and, you know, we're going to hire this engineer. And the engineer comes back and says, oh, you have to replace all your pipes. And that's going to cost you $27 million. Yeah. And you want to share that with your owners because maybe, you know, if you share it with your owners, they would have come up with some ideas on how you can address this. And, you know, hiding, hiding these decisions, you know, in private meetings and in executive session is not a good thing. Especially if, if, if it turns out that you have to do a special assessment. And as I said before, nothing's going to get your owners angrier than if you do a special assessment. And the first thing they're going to say is, why? Why? You guys screwed up again. You guys weren't doing your job. And this is why it's important in the board, for, board, for boards when they have their meetings to discuss all things that deal with the building in these meetings. And like I said, with the open communications, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's one of the most important things. And it might not be pleasant, but at least it's, it's transparent. And, uh, and, and, and I think people, you know, people can deal with bad news and, and, and unpleasant situations. But the thing of it is, is you got to go through the motions. You can't, you know, put yourself in a cocoon and especially the boards and decide, oh, well, we know better. And so we're going to do this in executive session. And, and uh, I, I will be getting to executive session because I've been hearing, one of the complaints I've been hearing is boards take decisions that are unpopular or might be, might be controversial and they stick them in executive session. But the statute says executive session is only for certain things. And so if you're a board and you're discussing the the pipe replacement project uh, and, and talking and thinking, oh, we might have to do a special assessment. That's not something you do in executive session. That's what you do outside with the, with the owners present so that they know what's happening. And, and, and in fact, the statute, let me, let me read from the statute. There are only certain things that you can do in executive session. And the primary reason why you go into executive session is it deals with confidential information that you don't want to disclose in a public meeting, okay? And so the statute says, it, one of the issues is personnel. And personnel is, is, is very confidential because it might be taking disciplinary action against your employees, wages, benefits. And that's not something that you discuss in a public forum. How would you like, you know, how would you like it if somebody was discussing your job and your performance and your wages in a public forum. That's why personnel issues are in executive session. Another topic that you, you talk about in, in uh, executive session is litigation that involves the board or may involve the board. And you know, so, so this involves you know, very confidential information because you're talking about exposure. If we do this and that, we're gonna get sued. If we do this and, and if, we, if, we, if we do this and that, maybe we might not get sued. So these are discussions that happen in executive session, not open to the public, and especially with ongoing uh, litigation, because you know, with on, ongoing litigation, one of the issues is settlement, and so you don't want. And settlement is something that's usually very private, that's discussed between the attorneys for the parties. So you don't want to discuss it in an open forum with everybody in the whole world. Okay, so that that's an issue that is an executive session matter. Uh, anything that involves attorney-client privilege, the attorney, the the uh, association is the client, and so anything that deals with uh, attorney-client privilege uh, is 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 dealt with in executive session and not in the public portions of the meeting. Just because it involves an attorney doesn't mean it's an executive session topic. Like, let's say I know 
with the pandemic, you haven't been able to have annual meetings. And so you ask your attorney for an opinion as to when you're going to be able to have your annual meeting. That is not a subject for executive session. There's no confidential information that's involved. There's no attorney client privilege that's involved. And so those kinds of, in fact, if you're an owner, you probably are wondering how come we haven't had our annual meeting. And you would probably be interested in that discussion. And so it shouldn't be happening in executive session. And, and for uh, all boards who are listening to me, if, you are, uh, if you're not sure as to whether it's executive session and it's not part of these topics, call your attorney. Do not rely on your property manager. They're not an attorney. They don't have the legal information to answer your question as to whether or not a certain topic is considered executive session material. Executive session is very limited, very, very limited. So you don't talk, and, and, and an executive session is, is not a place where you talk about things that you don't want the owners to hear because you're afraid they're gonna get mad at you, okay? You have to remember that executive session is only limited to certain things. Um, uh, oh, another, another topic that is executive session are ongoing negotiations. And let's say your, your negotiations for some contract uh, having to deal with a big project and you're dealing with three or four vendors. You don't wanna discuss it in the public meeting because somebody in that public meeting may go tell one of the prospective vendors what you're talking about. And, you, and those are negotiations that should be confidential until you reach an agreement. So like I said, those are the only four uh, matters uh, that have uh, uh, that can be discussed in executive session. And the things that are involved in an executive session, if you sit on a board, these are not matters that you go home and you talk to your spouse about, or you talk to your uncle Joe while at a bar. The things that are discussed in executive session are discussed there because they're confidential. And board members have a fiduciary duty to their association. And that means that if it's confidential, it doesn't go any further than the people in the room. So you don't go home and you don't tell your, your, your husband or your wife what happened in executive session. And you don't tell your neighbor and you don't tell your uncle Joe. Uh, it's confidential means confidential. Okay, and, 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 and this is, and, and, uh, uh, and what happens is, some people, you know, don't understand confidentiality. They go home and they, they tell their wife, the wife tells the neighbor. And before you know, and you know, like the game that kids play, I, I don't know what it's called now, but when we were kids, it was called telephone. And what happened is you would whisper something in, into the person next door and then you would sit around in a circle and see what comes out when it came back at the end. And it's different. And so that's why with executive session matters, if it's confidential, it's confidential. It means if you're a board member, it doesn't leave I mean, It stays with you, with the people in the room. And when you leave the room, then, um, you know, you do not discuss that uh, with anybody else. And, um, and with executive session, it, it should be very limited. Like I said, you know, it's only for special confidential matters not for stuff that you don't want the owners to hear. I mean, that would be one of the uh, worst things uh, uh, to use as a rule. But anyway, um, well, we're gonna have to leave it there because I'm, I'm running out of time. And, uh, but you know, you've been watching Condo Insider on Think Tech Hawaii. And today we've been discussing open board meetings. And uh, I wanna thank the viewers for tuning in. Uh, to this episode. And I'm going to be doing next week's show. Next week's show, uh, we're going to have Senator Sharon Moriwaki. And she represents, I think, Senate District 12, which is um, has a lot of condos. I mean, that's Kaka'ako, uh, Waikiki, uh, Ala Moana, uh, Mo'ili'ili. So anyway, and, and Sharon was one, you know, she introduced several bills. And uh, the then uh, the house companion to one of her bills is, is, you know, is going up to the governor's office. So we're very pleased with it. I think one of her other bills also made it through. So uh, we, we should have a very interesting conversation 
about condo legislation. And I'm going to I'm going to ask her too about that OHA project out there, you know, across from uh, Ward Warehouse, out there by the um, uh, by Alamoana in the marina there. And you know what's what what's going to happen? I mean, they they were going to try to build condos out there. And uh, the legislation that was uh, pending got knocked down, but the newspaper says OHA is still going forward. So I don't know what's going to happen. So please join me next week uh, with Sharon Moriwaki, and we're going to be talking about condo legislation and maybe the condos that are that OHA is trying to build uh, up there by Alamoana. Hey, okay, thank you again for joining us. Mahalo.